Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. And so while I'm a big supporter of TAA, if TAA slows down the fast track, I am prepared to vote against TAA because then its defeat, sad to say, is the only way that we will be able to slow down the fast track. I will be voting today to slow down the fast track to get a better deal for the American people. Bigger paychecks, better infrastructure, help the American people fulfill the American dream. Well, the headline is this. The biggest bully in the world has been defeated by a progressive conservative coalition. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Write it down because I'm the first to say it. And I'll say it again. The, the world's largest bully, the monster in the White House, did everything he could to scare the heck out of his own party and they wouldn't cave. The progressives would not cave into this bully who is wholly owned by Google, Microsoft, General Electric, you name it. You name the big government. You name the big uh, uh, business. They own Obama. Now you understand once and for all who he is. He's not a Democrat. He's not a progressive. He's a puppet. He is a puppet of the giant corporations, and I mean the giant corporations. I'm not an anti-corporatist, by the way. Let's be very clear. But I read this trade bill, and I'm going to give you the trade bill immigration provisions. Your hair will stand up. When you see what Zuckerberg and company were trying to get out of this uh, president. You will die in your seat when you see what Bill Gates was trying to get out of this president with this fast track garbage. And now you'll understand why even progressives have had enough of this fraud. And what's interesting to me is that the progressives and conservatives formed a coalition to defeat it. Boehner, frankly, should be tarred and feathered and driven out of the city. I mean symbolically, of course. Boehner should be given a, uh, uh, let's say, an award, the Benedict Arnold Award. Michael Savage grants John Boehner the Benedict Arnold Award of the Year. I've never seen anything like this guy. This guy would uh, vote against the American people for a $500 turkey. If Microsoft offered Boehner a $500 turkey dinner in a restaurant for him and his family, he'd vote against any American provision possible in my estimation. But let's get down to brass, brass tacks here. Trade deal for dummies. You say trade to me, I go to sleep. You say corp, uh, uh, trade deal, I go, to, I go to sleep faster. Now, many of you have heard rumors that this trade deal had provisions that would turn our immigration programs over to a few corporations such as who? Zuckerberg, Mr. Undershirt, needs more billions. Not enough for that greedy, pimply piece of garbage. No, it means more money for Google. Not enough for those two pigs. They wanted more, the two pigs. Not enough money for the pigs. No, every one of them is a pig. They have the gold disease. And so you say, well, wait a minute. So why did the progressives turn against these corporations who were their friend with all other progressive um, issues? I'll give, you, I'll give it to you in, 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 in the simplest way I possibly can. Why would Nancy Pelosi, the most, quote, progressive politician in American history, meaning communist, socialist, you name it, why did she vote against this? Because big unions are, are opposing it. So you say, well, wait a minute. Why would Trumpka and the unions oppose this deal? Aren't they in favor of everything Obama does that's progressive? you got to understand, at the end of the day, the unions are in business. They're in business. How do you think they siphon money to the top? From the poor little guys and the guys and dolls that work for them and then kick money up to the top. So if they... If they melt jobs to China or Japan or Canada or Mexico, their union membership declines and the money doesn't flow to the top. Do you understand how that works? It has nothing to do with America. It has nothing to do with the American worker. It has to do with the American union worker kicking money up to the top. So they say, of course we can't do this to our own members, not because we give a, a, a rat's behind about any of these people. They're nothing but cannon fodder to us. But if we, if we melt three million more jobs like NAFTA did, we're going to lose union members. We're going to lose some of the uh, money that's flowing to the top. We can't have it. It's as simple as that. It's realpolitik. I understand it. 
You know, they say once a scholar, always a scholar. Now, I began as a scholar in the university days. And so I spent time today reading the immigration provisions of this deal. You won't believe what's in this. I'm going to tell you that it has more to do with uh, uh, immigration than you could ever imagine. Boehner is a Benedict Arnold. McConnell, a Benedict Arnold. Ryan, a Benedict Arnold. They, they should all be given the Benedict Arnold Award of the day. I'd say Quisling, but nobody knows who Quisling is. But they know who Benedict Arnold is. He put on the uniform of the, of the, uh, of the British. That's who they are. Worthless, worthless sellouts. But they lost today. They're Chinese masters. I know the Chinese government, by the way, was not involved in TAA at this time. If you actually study this situation, do you know that at this time this bill, this uh, Trans-Pacific uh, uh, Workers Bill, does not even include China? Did you know that? It includes Vietnam. But may, I'll give you the numbers just right now. It's a trade bill, Trans-Pacific Partnership Countries, meaning free trade between the United States and Mexico, they didn't get enough out of us with the NAFTA, where, where half the companies in America, uh, over a certain amount of uh, money, moved to Mexico to cut down on workers' uh, wages here in America. $534 billion in trade. Japan, $201 billion in trade. Vietnam, $36 bill. Malaysia, $44 bill. Singapore, $47 bill. Australia, $37 bill. New Zealand, $8 bill. Peru, 16 And Chile, $26 billion. That's the total goods traded in the United States in 2014. But what you don't know and what I do know, because I know business better than you may imagine, is that American businesses are at a disadvantage all over the world because of the Benedict Arnolds in the United States Congress. Do you know that you, you, if you were an exporter, do you know that you are paying tariffs when you want to export to these most of these countries? And do you know that they get to dump their garbage on our shores with no tariffs? How long have I been calling for tariffs against these other countries? Probably as long as uh, you've been listening to me. It's the only way to protect America is with tariffs. You say, well, wait a minute. That's not free trade. I believe in free trade. There is no free trade when you have labor working for about one-fifth the wages of American workers, number one. And number two, there is no free trade when you've got these, company, these countries imposing tariffs on U.S. goods. So don't go for the garbage that this is about free trade and good for America. It has never been free trade and is not about free trade, and it's not good for America. But in this half hour, and I can't do it all at the beginning, I want to go back to the main point. The biggest bully in the world has been defeated by a progressive conservative coalition. Notice what I said. You're going to hear the progressives crowing that they stopped big corporations from shafting the American worker. It was not solely progressives. It was also Tea Party elected candidates, the real conservatives, and I don't mean Republicans. They are the Benedict Arnolds. And when I come back in a, sh in, a sh in a few short minutes, the trade bill immigration provisions, I studied them. Once a scholar, always a scholar. I actually studied them. You're not going to believe what's in it. But before we get to that, I invite you to call 855 400 The House rejects the trade bill rebuffing Obama's dramatic appeal, says even, even the progressive New York Times. Just came out. House Dems rebuffed a dramatic personal appeal from President uh, Bully on Friday, torpedoing his ambitious push to expand his trade negotiating power and quite likely his chance to secure a legacy defining trade accord spanning the Pacific Ocean. One could argue that he was put in power specifically by these foreign powers and he was supposed to deliver this cherry on the cake before he left office in order to collect the big bucks, the way Clinton has been collecting the big bucks ever since he sold us down the river, both to China and Mexico and anyone else who was willing to pay him and his wife whatever money uh, they ask. So make no mistake about it. He was looking for the cherry on the cake. He was looking for the big one. This is what he was put in office for by the New World Order, by the world government, whatever you want to say. He was supposed to deliver on this, and he went to Congress, and they rejected him. Even the progressives who normally back this bully uh, killed the assistance to workers part of the bill. And they did so to bring down legislation granting the bully trade promotion authority, which would have given the bully power to negotiate trade deals that cannot be amended or filibustered by Congress before it could even come to a final vote. And who did it? Who did it? Nancy Pelosi. She was the final, final touch. That's why we're celebrating Nancy Pelosi today. We, we respect her for this. For whatever the reasons that she did it, it does not matter. She stopped this bill, which would have melted millions of jobs in America. It would have been a disaster for us. They would have flooded America, not only, as I said to you, with B1 workers 
so that the pig at uh, Microsoft who pretends to be Mr. Nice Guy and Mr. Giving Away Money Guy and that pig in an undershirt at I'm not I'm not mincing words I hate these people I actually have a visceral hatred for them I hate people who hate America they're my enemies they're my mortal enemies I hate them because they're greedy I hate them because they're pigs I hate them because they don't care about the country I hate them because there's not enough gold in the world for these pigs that's why I use the word hate it's as strong a word as it's supposed to be you've got to reserve hatred for the right people they're hateful people they try to screw us when I read to you what they snuck into this bill and it's came, it came absolutely from these companies as sure as I'm sitting here where else would it have come from it came from the largest corporations in America run by the greediest most avaricious people the world has ever seen men who make the Aztecs look like benevolent tourists I'll be right back Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I will be voting today to slow down the fast track to get a better deal for the American people. Bigger paychecks. Better infrastructure. All right, all right. Stop with the Help bigger paychecks. Them. It's all about union dues. We know that. All right, whatever. Whatever the reasons are, you did the right thing, Nancy. Thank you. We salute you. This is the Savage Nation. It's actually a good, uh, good day for America because the biggest bully in the world, Barack Obama, has been defeated by a progressive conservative coalition. You say, well, wait a minute. Now, what is this really about? Can you give me the trade bill for dummies? You say trade, I go to sleep. Well, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. You, you heard about B1 business visitor visa programs. You've heard about those. That gives the pockmarked undershirt wearing Zucker face the ability to bring in cheap workers from India primarily. He has a lot of people from India in uh, his company who work in immigration, making sure that the government mows down American workers so he can pocket more money for his little piggy bank. That's a B1B uh, visa. Now, it was never meant to be that. The B-1B visa, visa, excuse me, was created to bring in foreign workers when there were no American workers who could do that work. That's all it was passed for. At least that's what the people were told. And like the good people we are, we believe the liars, the poisonous liars, the traitors who should be thrown into prison for what they've done to this country. They didn't want it for that. They didn't want it to bring in workers that they couldn't get here. They did it only to increase the bottom line. So that's just the beginning. So they would have given the companies no regulation, uh, excuse me, the ability to bring in under-regulated B-1B visas. And also there's an L-1 intra-company transferee program you don't know about. The L-1 intra-company transferee program, it's a visa program, would be used by these greedy Aztecs to permit temporary employees from abroad to work in the United States with no economic needs tests period congress could not impose in these needs tests so if if zuckerberg the greedy aztec wanted to say you know what i'm just going to bring in temporary employees from abroad to work for me they'll work for let's say 25 an hour i'll fire all of the old guys who are making 70 an hour and throw them in the gutter so i can buy a bigger yacht that would have been fine now remember these visa programs are already under regulated they're already abused by big corporations because the, neither the L-1 nor the B-1 visa program is numerically limited by law. This means that potentially hundreds of thousands of workers could enter the United States every year to work in these 38 sectors. Now, that's just the beginning. Do you remember what GATT did to us, G-A-T-S? Do you remember that when I was on the radio in the 90s, I tried to warn you about NAFTA and GATT? It has not worked for America. NAFTA and GATT has gutted American manufacturing and American workers. Did you, did you understand that? Congress now wants to raise visa fees, as they did in 2010, in order to slow down the flow of H-1B uh, workers. Guess who opposes it? The Indian government. Our good friends in India oppose this. They're crying foul, and they threaten to formally complain to the World Trade Organization because we want them to pay more money for these guest worker visas. They won't be happy till they also overrun America. Don't assume that they're nice guys and they're just here for us. Did you know that 
uh, it was either Microsoft, I believe. Yeah, it is Microsoft. I looked into this very carefully. Has an entire partnership with immigration attorneys, almost all of whom are of Indian descent. Look into it carefully. I support Indian people. I have from the beginning. But I don't support any race, any religion that hates America and undermines us. It's that simple. So there's a lot more to the trade bill and immigration than meets the eye. There are four other things I have to tell you about. And you have to remember this. The TSA has been written in secret by and for major corporations that would benefit them only if it became law. It was written for Microsoft. It was written for uh, Facebook. It was written for Google. It was written for the tech companies who lobbied around the clock with the bully in chief. They want more profit, that's all. And they got shafted today because of a progressive conservative coalition. Incidentally, where does Ms. Clinton stand on this? Nowhere, as usual, a liar and a hider. It was her husband, after all, who gave us NAFTA. Do you remember NAFTA? And raise your hands if you remember what Bill Clinton did to America, that greedy Aztec, stealing hundreds of millions of dollars under the guise of speaker fees and this and contributions. And where is she on this? Nowhere to be found. So let's go back to free trade. Many of you are confused. You don't know what free trade is. I'll take some calls. 855-407-282. Stephen, WABC, we have a minute. Make your point. Go ahead, please. Hi. Yes, I think it was a stroke of brilliance on Obama's part because he knew that the Democrats would, have, would be against the bill because it was anti-union, and anything that he puts his name on, the Republicans would reflex, reflexively oppose. He, he called Obama trade. They would absolutely vote against it, so he got his way. The bill was killed. It's my opinion. Sir, what are you talking about? The Republicans voted for it. You got that backwards. But he got enough Republicans to vote against it so that the bill the bill does. Sir, it was the Democrats who in a majority voted against your bully boss. No, Obama went to Congress this morning to lobby for it. You're just trying to you're just trying to spin this to make your progressive friends think you're smart. That you got in the Michael Savage show and got the best of him. My friend, you just went away with egg on your face. I'm not even giving you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca. You're not worthy of it. I'll be back. This is Michael Savage. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. We are out seeing the real world. We uh, don't live in a cloister where the only people who can get in are the captains of industry and the titans of Wall Street. We're the ones touring factories and, and places of business every day. And so the president should trust us, his 200 most fervent supporters, who, unlike him, have a chance to get out and see the real world. That's Representative Brad Sherman a progressive stooge who did not vote for this. The progressive stooge, Brad Sherman, Democrat, California, opposed the president on this. Most Democrats opposed the president on this, including some of the top dogs out there. Nancy Pelosi, as you know, Jim McGovern, a, a, a lunatic left winger, said, I think that it's an unfair bill. He told the Huffington Post of Obama's comments when he was fighting them. And he said, I think that rather than the president engaging in this war of words, he ought to take the concerns that have been expressed by a lot of Democrats seriously and try to address them. That's a super progressive. Brad Sherman, we just played, saying he's out of touch with reality. And you take one of the other leftists, Marcy Kaptur, the Ohio, and she said that the Democrats should save President Obama from his advisors on, on this trade madness. How about... Trade's biggest opponent in the House, Connecticut's Rosa DeLauro, an otherwise flaming, flaming pinko. Rosa DeLauro accused her good friend House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi of not understanding her own party. That's before Pelosi finally went along with her on this. So don't tell me it was the Republicans who undermined uh, uh, Obama. It was his own Democrat party that he couldn't uh, get to go along with Microsoft, Google, uh, you name the company that was lobbying for this, and they were lobbying heavily for it. What they wanted from this was cheaper labor, and I told you in what form. Not only B1B v business visitor visas, but L1 intra-company transferees. So what does that mean? What would they have done? What would, that, what would they have done if they got this? The competitive advantage that foreign companies would have gotten from TSA or TISA 
would be the ability to provide cheaper services by importing much cheaper labor to supplant American workers and paying their workers the much lower salaries they would earn in their home countries, as they already do in the L1 and B1 visa programs. So it's all about a bottom line, a bigger bottom line for Larry Ellison, a bigger bottom line for all of the other global titans who have no loyalty to the United States of America, the country that gave them their start. This is how they reward us, trying to stick a knife in our back. There were no other words for this. I speak clear English, I speak clearly, and I speak bluntly. I don't make up words to go with words. Sometimes fewer words are more important than bigger words. They are greedy. They make Aztecs look like benevolent tourists in terms of what they're doing to this country. 855-407-282. I'm not finished yet. I'm going to read you more of the trade bill immigration provisions. <clears throat> because as I said to you earlier, once a scholar, always a scholar. And rather than just reading the headlines, as most talk shows only have the time to do, I dug into the bill. I read the trade bill immigration provisions. These are only a few of what these greedy Aztecs wanted to do to this country. Let's take a caller or two to break up the, uh, the flow of my voice here. Let's go to WMAL in Washington, D.C. Tom, go ahead. What's on your mind? Uh, hello. I want to say that you're unique amongst the uh, conservative talk show hosts in your stance on free trade because all of them always support free trade it's almost like a religion and what you say about dumping well, wait which conservative talk show hosts support free trade which one of them have come out in favor of it i, I don't listen to them so i don't know who it would be um, um on uh, it's typical that it is supported uh free trade is okay let, let i know who supports it wall street journal supports free trade that's murdoch they, there's ne they never met anything but free trade they love free trade Doctrinaire Republicans love free trade because they work for the big companies, right? But I'm in favor of real free trade, and that would inc in in incorporate tariffs against companies like uh, nations like China. We must impose tariffs on China in order to loosen their stranglehold on our economy. And I have said back in the, my last two books ago, which was Trickle Up Poverty, a huge bestseller, that we should impose a 20% tariff on all goods produced in China, and that we should raise the tariff by 5% every year that China refuses to revalue its currency. One of the methods they have used to keep their cheap goods flooding America is by not revaluing their currency. You know that, don't you? Yes. Okay. And you also know that this bill that Obama tried so hard to get passed today uh, also permitted these countries to manipulate their currencies in order to continue dumping not only cheap labor, but cheap goods on these shores until the whole country was gutted from a manufacturing point of view, and all was left was a bunch of consumers. All right, well, thanks for the call. I appreciate that. 855-407-282. 855-407-282. Now, the biggest loser in this is the weasel Ted Cruz. I've told you for over six weeks now I thought Ted Cruz was a weasel. You said, well, why did you say that? I, I'm a quick judge of politicians. There's certain things that add up in my mind very quickly. First of all, I saw which talk show host supported him. I knew he was a weasel. You know, a birds of a feather flock together. So immediately by the support of those who supported him, I knew he was a weasel like they are. I won't mention their names. The ones who pretend that they're big uh, rock rib Republican conservatives, they're weasels. They supported the Republican Party and they still do. But let's put them aside. Ted Cruz is a weasel. He supported this. So you know the big loser here are the Tea Party groups who supported Ted Cruz. They must be heartbroken because they didn't listen to Michael Savage when I told you, watch out. When I told you, warning. When I told you that he is no different than Paul Ryan. I warned you about Ted Cruz. Nevertheless, he's finished. He's toast. He's gone. He, he, he has emoliated himself on the stake of this bill because he came out in favor of it. And that should tell you everything you need to know about the weasel, Ted Cruz. He's the biggest loser. So put an X through his candidacy. It's over. WBAP in Dallas. Jim, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you very much, Mr. Savage. And I just want to thank you. I'm a Republican, but I'm also a domestic manufacturer. And uh, what your comments on the, the theory of free trade versus reality is very refreshing because I'll tell you, the Congress, you know, Republicans in Washington, D.C., I mean, that is their mantra, is free trade, but they don't understand free trade. They don't understand it. They're not businessmen. They're just lobbyists for companies that pay them off. Go 
to sell my product to China, yet I fight China every day because they're dumping policy, because we allow them to dump their, their product into our country. And it's just... That's right. You see, I, people don't understand this. I myself am not in business, but my family is in business, and they have business all over the world in many, many countries. So I listen in and I learn. And I learned that if we export, we have to pay tariffs to most of these countries, while those countries can, can dump their goods on our shores with no tariffs. Is that free trade? Of course it isn't. They don't have EPA. They don't have OSHA. They don't care about their uh, employees. We do, and, and it's never a balanced playing field, but going up to D.C. to try to convince some, now not all, but some, is just talking with, to this wall over here. But it's uh, thank you for your comments, because I hope that it'll... Some light bulbs will go off because it needs to. People need to see that there is no such thing as, as free trade. trade. And do you agree with me that tariffs on certain foreign countries and certain foreign goods might be in order? Of course. Of course I do. Of course I do. Like and you know, you know if you've studied the history of America that in the early days of our colonies, did you know that we had to put – they, the early guys, had to put tariffs on foreign goods – because they too were trying to undermine the domestic, uh, the domestic industrial base that was growing here, and and they were they were dumping their goods. It was mainly England was dumping their goods on our shores at below cost of manufacturing to prevent their own manufacturing base from being built up. So the founding fathers put tariffs on their goods. People don't know that. You know, it's it's the security of our nation. You know, and you know this, I know, but I don't know what the percentage is today. But th several years ago, the Department of Defense, eighty five percent of their purchases was from out of the country. I mean, can Oh, you it's awful. That's right. How many critical electronic components of our fighter jets and bombers are made by our enemies in China? You would, it's, it's, How many it's, chips have they put into our aircraft which they can monitor? Maybe they can control our fighter planes in midair. How do we know what they've done to our ships and planes with the Quislings running this country? God Both God. sides of the aisle, by the way. Listen, it's worse than we think, but I don't want to panic the people. Today is a watershed day because Nancy Pelosi, for her own greedy interests, shafted her boss, Obama. That really is good news, don't you think? Oh, yes. And, you know, I just don't think our tax dollars should be to support China. Or Nobody China. does. Nobody does. China is on a war footing. The same way Japan was on a war footing in the 1930s, you ask any military analyst, China is building up their military as quickly as they can, and there's only one reason for it. And it's not to send tofu abroad. I'm sending you a copy of Countdown to Mecca because it's the most important novel of the year 2015, written by yours truly, Michael Savage. It's a quick read, and it is an important read, and it is a great, great Father's Day gift. It's in every bookstore or on Amazon. Countdown to Mecca. Let's go to the callers, 855-400-7282. This is an amazing day, by the way. If you don't know what it's all about, the biggest bully in the world, Barack Obama, was today given a resounding defeat by a coalition of progressives and conservatives who said, yet, no. Now, it's not over yet. Remember, it's not over yet. They're going to vote again on Tuesday, which means that he's going to sweeten the deal by buying off some of the Democrats, no doubt, uh, on this. So anything could happen on Tuesday, just as they bought people off for Obamacare to give us socialized medicine uh, you won't know what's in it until we pass it. Same thing here. They didn't want you to know what's in the bill. I found out what's in the bill. I did my homework. And I focused for you today only on the immigration provisions. They are far more dangerous than you have been told. It is not rumored, Mr. Ryan. No, Mr. Ryan, they're not rumors. They're far worse than anybody could imagine. And Paul Ryan, you should get the Benedict Arnold combined award with the Mr. Quisling Award will give you the the Benedict Arnold and the Quisling Award all in one, Ryan. You get both. You get a due out of it. WDRC, Pauline, welcome to the Savage Nation program. What's on your mind? Hi, I watched the vote today on the trade bill that went down handily, I might add, and you're absolutely right. Without the Democrats, it wouldn't have went down. Only the good conservative Republicans voted against it. But after the vote, you had to see Majority Whip <clears throat> Carthy and Speaker O'Boehner. They were so livid. In fact, uh, Boehner said, remember that the American people are watching this, as if it was a wonderful thing to vote for this. What are we going to do? I'm beside myself. I don't know. Boehner is a Benedict Arnold. He's a total traitor. There's no question about it. He's a bought and sold 
puppet of special interests. It's so clear. It's nakedly clear. He reminds me of the old line politicians in America in the smokestack days. He comes from a smokestack state. He acts like a smokestack politician. He's as cheap as they come. It looks like they could buy him for Thanksgiving turkey and a trip to Jacksonville over the holidays to go with it. This guy would do anything for a freebie. It's a disgrace. The Republican Party either should... Republican Party, excuse me. I'll stop the sentence right there. There is no Republican Party. There's just a group of lobbyists, as far as I can tell. Pauline, I'm sending you a copy of Countdown to Mecca. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Some of the most left-wing Democrats come from some of the most depressed areas in America. Louise Slaughter, for example, of New York. She lives in an area where the jobs have been exported with NAFTA and GATT. The cities are gutted out. Even she said she couldn't vote for it because she would have been thrown out on her dirty dress. But here in, Amer- here, here in California, the hall of shame begins. The Silicon Valley pigs Thursday made a major push for Obama's trade deal. And we have the names. In a letter sent to House members yesterday, 27 Aztecs from companies including, here they go, AT&T, IBM, Microsoft, Hewlett Packard, eBay, Cisco, Intel, and Xerox lobbied very, very hard for Obama's sellout on trade. I can read the letter, and the letter is full of crap. It's all about lower, lower wa- wages. That's all it is. They give a whole rigmarole about protection this and protection that, and it'll protect us in the age of free flow of data. It's nonsense. It's all about L1 intracompany transferees and B1 business visa programs, so far as I can tell. Now, if you look around you in America, you see a country that you don't even know is yours anymore. And you wonder, where are they all coming from? Why are they all here? Where did they come from? How did we get so many of them? You think all of them are illegal aliens who snuck across the border from Mexico. Well, a majority of them are. But that's not where they came from. Many of them are basically guest workers in these big corporations that I have just mentioned and others. Do you understand this? They're bringing them in on L1 intracompany transfers. They're paying them foreign wages, undermining the wages of Americans. Those are the people you see walking around the cities. They didn't sneak into this country. They were rubber stamped into this country in order to let these corporations and others lower their labor costs. It's as simple as that. So why is it we in America can't stop this? It's because Bill Clinton sold America out with GATT. Bill Clinton sold America out with NAFTA. That's how he's cashed in so well. What do you think they pay him all that money for? Because they like to hear his, his, his kindly little voice? This is how they make money. They do the bidding of various and sundry corporations and countries. And then when they're out of office, they collect hundreds of millions of dollars in so-called speeches. But let's get back to this. <clears throat> the multilateral GATS agreement, of which the United States is a party, limits the United States government's ability to change the rules on H-1B and L-1 guest worker visas. We can't change them. And so when we want to raise visa fees, the Indian government cries foul and threatens to go to the WTO to complain about us. One last note. Where are all these people from Chile coming from in Singapore in the United States? Barack Obama signed the U.S.-Chile and U.S.-Singapore trade deal. They included new guest worker programs similar to the H-1B and constraints in the U.S. government's ability to set rules on L1 intracompany transfers. So America was then flooded with cheaper workers from Chile and Singapore. So don't assume they're all coming here over the border. They're being ushered in by these greedy corporations run by men who make the Aztecs, who pillage Central and South America, look like benevolent tourists. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage.
Warning, The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. And so while I'm a big supporter of TAA, if TAA slows down the fast track, I am prepared to vote against TAA because then its defeat, sad to say, is the only way that we will be able to slow down the fast track. I will be voting today to slow down the fast track. We don't need the whole thing. You got the picture, the bully. The bully lobbied her. The bully lobbied everyone else. He uh, got off the golf game. He changed his morning routine. I don't know what he does in the morning, but he's never seen in the morning or rarely seen in the morning. Today, he went to Capitol Hill, the bully, and tried to try to bull, bully, bulldoze everyone into voting uh, for this sellout, this c- corporate crony capitalism, this sellout of American workers. And even Pelosi didn't go for it for one reason. It's not that she loves the American worker. I mean, let's be clear. She's a, a wackadoodle progressive. We know what she stands for. But she's closely tied into the American Union movement, which she's entitled to be. And so when Mr. Trump of the AFL-CIO came out against it, she obviously came out against it. Now, why would he come out against it? What, does he love the workers so much all of a sudden? I don't think so. What is a union? How do the union uh, bigwigs make their money? From dues. So if you lose another few million workers to uh, foreign workers who will not be union members you lose dues. So they can't have that. It was bad for their business. And so that's why she went for it, in my opinion. And as far as the progressives, I mean, I can go to one district in New York, like I think it's Buffalo where Louise Slaughter is from, another so-called progressive. She was against it. Why? Because her city is hollowed out. It was destroyed by Bill Clinton with uh, NAFTA and, and GATT. Mr. and Mrs. Clinton did so much for the American worker, didn't they? Well, anyway, you get the picture. What's really disgusting is there's a guy on CNN whose last name rhymes with the man who invented the flush toilet uh, in England. And I won't mention his name, but this man whose last name rhymes with the man who invented the flush toilet in England is not covering any of this because it's bad news for Obama and he's a stooge of Obama. And so uh, they're not even covering this. They're covering the, the prison escape. Most people don't care about the prison escape. They care about jobs. They care about America's sovereignty. Uh, Mr. Shall I say last name whose rhyme with last name you you get the picture many of you don't know what I'm talking about anyway none of this would have happened under a true conservative administration the Constitution would be honored not stepped on race riots would not be smoldering in our cities Obamacare would never have been passed crony corporate cap capitalism such as this would have been exposed had we had a true conservative in the White House the useless alphabet agencies like EPA and FCC would have been thrown out of business, put out of business. The Federal Reserve would be audited to see where the money is going and what they're stealing. Corrupt banksters and politicians would be running out of the country on the first jet to Switzerland because they'd be going to jail. Our borders would be secured with the military. Small businesses would be growing in this country if legislation, easing regulations and red tape would have been eliminated. Unemployment levels would be at extraordinarily low levels as the American economy would roar back to life. Auto companies that couldn't survive wouldn't have been bailed out. And most importantly, we would be running the Keystone XL pipeline, not making sure that Obama's donors block it so they can run the oil in from Canada on their railroad cars, Mr. Buffett. Don't think we're all so stupid. The fact of the matter is, this country is melting down faster than Chernobyl. And these corporate oligarchs are the greediest men in the history of the world. They're worth billions of dollars, and it's still not enough for them. They want lower and lower wages. They want to flood America with workers from uh, uh, the Pacific Rim right now in order to make certain that they can kick out more mature American workers and throw them in the gutter so they can buy another yacht of 400 foot in length and then give away more money making believe they're so benevolent, Mr. Bill Gates. We're not impressed with you, Bill Gates. We don't buy your sweater act. We see through you. And you, Zuckerberg, you're a special case. 
You've been acting like you're for immigration, marching with your Hispanic buddies over the months. We saw right through you, Zuckerberg. You're a greedy, pimply-faced Harvard sheep, as far as we're concerned. You're the lowest of the low. We, the American people, are boiling over with anger and rage at these phonies. Trump could thank Pelosi personally for doing this. And this is where the AFL-CIO President Trump is today crediting Pelosi with the blow to Obama trade. He thanked her for it. Right. This is amazing. This is a big story. He's the number one labor union head, and he said this today. I wish we had the sound. Maybe my guys can find it. Rep. Nancy Pelosi, he said, has always fought for working families, and today her leadership on the trade package vote was instrumental in the House voting against another bad trade deal, said the labor union head. Can you imagine this? Isn't it odd that I, Michael Savage, arch conservative, independent nationalist, would be thanking Nancy Pelosi for undermining Obama? and the corporate titans. Isn't this an amazing day in American history? It really is, yes. Well, I'm sending you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca to show you what's going on on an international level. It's a great read for Father's Day. You know, I couldn't wait to get up today. I didn't sleep very well last night. I was tossing and turning all night. Why? I kept thinking three in the morning, four in the morning, five in the morning, trade deal, trade deal, trade deal. What's going to happen? I couldn't wait to wake up. I didn't know when this was going to come down. I didn't know how it was going to come down. Of course, I was praying that some magic would happen and it would, go, it would go down in defeat for now, which it has. And it was Nancy Pelosi of all, of all people, it was Nancy Pelosi, the progressive, the progressive voice. Perhaps when you say progressive, I hate the word. I don't even like the word progressive. I call it communist socialist voice. The number one communist socialist voice in America, Nancy Pelosi, is the one who undermined Barack Obama, who, as you can see, is neither leftist nor rightist. He's not progressive. He's not conservative. He's nothing. He is a stooge of the mega corporations. He is a stooge of China. He's a stooge of the Soros types. He is a stooge, in other words, of these secret powers that have usurped the authority of the American people over their government. It's a very important point that you understand that government was never intended to run the people. I don't think you understand the founding documents of this country. And I don't have the time to do it right now. I'll do it in a few months from now. I know you, many of you know what it's about. But the founding fathers distrusted government, which is why they set up a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. They never trusted big government. They set it up so that they couldn't take total control. So what did these gangsters try to do today? They knew they couldn't get control of the people through Congress because it would too, be too visible. So these gangsters try to create a trade deal which would have given the bully in chief the power to set policy in areas such as immigration, bypassing the people altogether. This is exactly what the founding fathers warned us against. The devils are in the halls of Congress. And there's no better quote on this than the quote that I put from Cicero in the front of one of my books many years ago. I have to find it without knocking my equipment over. It's in the beginning of a book that I published in 2005. After all, I am a writer as well as a broadcaster, so I have to refer to my own books. You'll have to pardon me if it gets tiresome, but after 30 some odd books, uh, sometimes you have to quote yourself since everyone else is quoting you without attribution. I may as well quote myself. But back in 03, I published a book entitled The Enemy Within. It's actually the last time I actually looked good on a book cover. I had a full head of hair. I was wearing a raincoat. My shadow was against the back wall of a building in North Beach up on Grant Avenue. I still know the wall where it was taken. The shadow was perfect. <clears throat> Michael Savage, The Enemy Within. And I dedicate, I didn't dedicate it. I quoted Marcus Cicero, Roman orator, Statesman 42 BC. You've heard it many times since from others who listened to me. And he wrote, a nation can survive its fools and even the ambitious but it cannot survive treason from within. An enemy at the gates is less formidable, for he is known and carries his banner openly. But the traitor moves amongst those within the gate freely. His sly whisper is rustling through all the alleys, heard in the very halls of government itself. For the traitor appears not a traitor. He speaks in accents familiar to his victims. And he wears their face, Mr. Obama, and their arguments, Mr. Ryan. He appeals to the baseness that lies deep in the hearts of all men. Boehner rots the soul of a nation. Ryan works secretly and unknown in the night with Boehner to undermine the pillars of the city. Boehner and Ryan infected the body politic so that it can no longer resist. 
a murderer is less to fear. Now, of course, I modified Cicero's statement from 42 BC to give it some pertinent a current events like flavor. So who is the enemy within? Well, we have a, a list of them right now. Boehner would be at the top of the list. Uh, Ryan would be at the top of the list. And I'm sad to say that too many of the Republican candidates who have tricked the Tea Party uh, movement, and great people, they never tricked me. I knew that they were phonies. I knew they were phonies by, number one, those who supported them in radio are all phonies, and number two, I knew they were phonies because they were afraid to face Michael Savage. They faced softballers. They played tiddlywink. They played wiffle ball, wiffle ball, hiffle ball, miffle ball, but they would never play with Savage. And I knew they were hiding something. They were afraid of me in plain English. Well, right now, they should be afraid of you because you should never, ever support them again. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The uh, biggest loser here is Ted Cruz, the weasel, exposed as such. Rubio, I heard, went along with it. And that was obvious by the support of Larry Ellison, who may as well put a chain on his neck and walk him around like a, a pet dog. But now I'm sorry to say the one candidate I held out as a possible individual who I thought could run for the presidency, who I could support, uh, the caller was, was right. Scott Walker pushed Obama trade last night while I was sleeping. Came out on Breitbart. Here it is. Scott Walker put an X through him, another phony. Despite staying largely silent on the issue, he's quietly supported it for weeks, but hasn't said anything at all in a long time. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker crossed most conservatives by coming out in support of Obama trade on Thursday evening in an interview with Bloomberg's Mark Halpern. Walker, Bloomberg's Halpern, and John McCormick wrote this, uh, wrote, expressed agreement with President Barack Obama on the pressing issue of fast-track trade legislation. Walker said he supports giving Obama the authority to submit trade agreements to Congress for an expedited up or down vote without amendments, they wrote, before quoting Walker himself. Here's the exact quote. If we don't go down this path, we're going to be at a competitive disadvantage, and so I think it just makes sense, Walker said. Now, what's interesting is Walker never saw the bill. So who is it who lobbied Walker to say that? It would have to be the very same gang that lobbied everyone else in the country. So Walker is a bought and sold candidate like all the rest of them. It's that, it's that simple. It's as simple as that. Walker now joins Obama in the cast of villains, as far as I'm concerned, along with the top greedy tech pigs who tried to shaft American workers. WABC, Eddie, welcome to the Savage Nation. Fire away. You're missing the big thing about the H-1B visa, is that it legalizes basically slavery in the United States, because what they do is they bring in these people. Most of them are high-tech people. Their programmers, developers network people, they bring them in mostly from India through consulting companies. They have, they have big contracts with the Fortune 500 companies. Well, I know. I already said all of this, so what part of it did I miss? Five years they got them. Sir, excuse me. I've said all of this over an hour. What part did I miss? The part that you miss is they got them as slaves. They work them 50, 60 hours a week. They pay them less than what they have to pay somebody in the United States. But I said that. I said they pay them less. So which part of this is new? Okay, before five years, if they apply for their green card, they're sent back without the green card. They're All right, that's another story. So, in other words, not only do they shaft the American worker, the greedy technical pigs like Mark Zuckerberg, for whom there's not enough money in the world, just like the Aztecs couldn't find enough gold. So, not only do they screw the American worker, they also screw the Indian worker by throwing him out, right? And if he doesn't apply... Then they allow him to stay another year, two years, three years, and also bring his wife over and his family over. All right. So in other words, both sides get screwed by the oligarchs in plain English. All right. Very nice. We, we have some of the finest men in American history working inside Congress and working in corporations. They're amongst the most elite, patriotic men the country has ever seen in its couple of hundred years it's been in existence. Men like Mark Zuckerberg are on the, in the league of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.
today the best idea is to vote yes. Not for the president, not for ourselves, but for our kids and our grandkids. You drunk And I know some members of this body uh, don't like trade promotion authorities. Some don't like trade adjustment assistance. You Benedict Arnold. But today, Why don't I'm you here leave to vote the house and shut him up. He ought to leave the house in shame before he's tarred and feathered for what he's just done. Who does he think he's fooling? Does he think we're all a bunch of country rubes who believe he, he talks like that and he means it? He's a, a sellout. A sellout. No, we don't like trade adjustment assistance, Mr. Boehner, not because we're stupid. Because some of us actually looked into the immigration provisions. We know exactly what it's all about. And thank God, thank God that the progressives who were afraid they would lose their seats because many of them are in very progressive, uh, very, very burnt out districts, terrible unemployment, industrial base hollowed out by Bill Clinton's NAFTA and GATT. They knew they'd be thrown out if they went along with this sellout and they said no. So the progressives joined the real conservatives in a coalition and defeated this, this uh, Benedict Arnold. Fox News says trade agenda defeat. Obama suffers stunning setback as House Democrats kill trade agenda. Uh, maybe we ought to, uh, I think we should contribute a carton of cigarettes to President Obama to help him over the weekend. Because I don't think a pack is going to help him over the next 48 hours. I think he's going to need at least a carton to go through him. Call for Philip Morris. Despite Obama's 11th hour personal appeal during a rare morning visit to Capitol Hill, I guess he got up earlier than normal. What do you mean a rare morning visit? What does he do in the morning normally? What was he doing in the morning? I don't understand. What do you mean rare morning visit? House Democrats, led by Nancy Pelosi, band together and overwhelmingly vote to kill Obama's trade agenda. And this is an astounding story. You have to understand why Pelosi voted against it. It's because she's tied closely to the AFL-CIO, which she's entitled to be, by the way. And they oppose it because if any more millions of workers get shafted and lose their jobs, their union dues go down in plain English. It's business as usual. Okay. It's as simple as that. It's business. It's, you know, who's ever a nest is fed that I'm a I'm a, a pragmatist at the end of the day. And I couldn't sleep last night because I was praying the bully got defeated. I was praying the bully would be exposed to his progressive base for what he actually is. I was praying the bully would finally be exposed to the progressives. I doubt very much they'll ever say a bad word about him. They'll be afraid of being called racist or something like that. 855-400-7282. How do you feel about this? KSFO, Kim, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your opinion on the trade agenda defeat? Um, I'm a lifelong Democrat. I'm the only one in my family for generations, many generations. When it came to TPP, what Pelosi did and the other Democrats did was to save their own butt. There is a huge part of the Democratic Party that is not acceptable to those of us that very much believed in FDR, that very much believed in building the Hoover Dam, that very much believed in full employment. The Democrats now are so closely aligned with, I don't think people understand that these IT heads are not businessmen. They are monarchs. In San Francisco, the head of the ITs are monarchs. They override well, you're not you're not telling me anything I don't know. I looked right through Zuckerberg the, the day I saw him. I know what he was. I, I'm not. You think I'm taken in by Bill Gates' kindly approach? You think I buy Warren Buffett's grandfatherly act? I don't. Well, this is people don't understand this. They think globally. Globally, to me, means they what they want is the free flow of goods, products, services. Over all borders. Well, we understand all There's nothing new in what you just said. We understand that. But what they really want is cheaper labor. That's what they really want. If you understand that what they're trying to get is the lowest wages, which is what you've been saying. Yeah. Well, let, let me ask you something. Um, Kim, you say you're a lifetime Democrat, and yet you and I agree on this. I, I assume this is not the first time you've, you've tuned into the Savage Nation. I love your show. No, I understand, but why? Why would you love the show if you're a progressive Democrat and I'm not? Because you're crazy brave. <laughs> I'll take the second part of that statement, but not the first. You are. You're crazy brave, and you've been blessed with a very strong mind. And Well, what, it, what, you, what you really mean is if there was a man like me in your family, you'd be a conservative. Oh, I don't 
don't know about that. I can't. <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. I wanted to see how I get a response. Well, I'm going to send you a gift for Father's Day. I assume you have a husband or a father or a brother? I have a husband and a brother. Well, I'm going to send you countdown to Mecca for either of them. Let him fight over it. But don't you feel this is a good day for America? Kim. I really didn't think it would happen. I'm Kim, honest to God, did you actually think Pelosi would, would go along in defeating Obama's trade agenda? I really didn't. Look, I'm, I'm glad that this happened, but wait until Tuesday. Nothing's done yet. Yes, you're right. Obama's going to work the weekend. He's going to give them uh, highways to nowhere. He is going to give them trips on the Google plane. He is going to give them ice cream with Buffett. He is going to give them sweaters uh, from Bill Gates's uh, uh, wool ranch in New Zealand. Whatever it's going to take, they're going to get. They're going to buy the votes over the weekend. Don't you agree with me? Yeah, but you see, Michael, I think what's going to happen is if the Democrats feel like they did the right thing today, it'll give them cover to fall on their knees on Tuesday. So we've got to keep them strong on this. We've got to let them know people, just normal people, I don't care what party you're from, call your representative and say, we are serious about maintaining jobs here in the United States. Period. Well, I agree. I don't understand how they can't see that we, the people, are not that dumb. When, well, we don't know what's in it. I actually did the homework. You heard me talking about the immigration provisions, Absolutely. didn't you? Absolutely, you're correct. I am the only one in the media who spent this morning going through that part of the bill that was released because we kept hearing, oh, it's all gossip, it's Internet gossip, there's nothing in it, oh, go along with it. Remember that garbage we were hearing? Well, yeah. I looked at it. It's far worse than we think. The immigration provisions that were hidden inside the, um, in, inside the deal are worse than you could ever imagine, Kim. Uh, it's, I can imagine, Michael. I can imagine. Let's leave the it. The TISA was written in secret by and for major corporations that would have benefited greatly if it had become law. They wanted to grant Obama uh, the total power for fast track trade promotion, but it really was granting Microsoft, Cisco, uh, you name, I, I named the companies. They were the ones who wrote this bill, they were the ones who wanted the bill. Obama was just their salesman for it, Kim. Right. Thank you. Stay on the line. Free copy of uh, Mecca going out to you for uh, Father's Day because there's a Democrat I could have a glass of coffee with. I could use a cup of coffee right now. WBAP in Dallas. Dave, thank you. What's on your mind, my friend? Hi, Michael. I enjoy your show immensely. And Good. I'm, I'm glad that you're one of the few who do. I always <laughs> do. But the thing of it is, is you're right, but you don't know how right you are. Because for years, even in the mid-80s, I've been training people to, uh, for H1, or, yeah, H1B and other uh, corporate-sponsored people coming over to be technical representatives for one thing or another. But you got to understand, these people cannot do the jobs that are here until after they're trained. Because they use a totally different engineering system than what we do. They so, in other words, you are a tech trainer in Texas, I assume, and it says you trained aerospace H-1B-1 workers, correct? That is correct. And the, and, well, and these corporations brought them in on the B-1s and also L-1 intracompany transfers? They, they used L-1 intracompany transferee uh, visas, which no one knows about except me. That's a correct statement. And what we would do is we would train them in off buildings and off sites and things like that because uh, they use a metric system. We use the inch system. Mm -hmm. they would come in and they they would be trained by the people they're going to replace. Is basically what it amounts to. It's in other words, they had American workers dig their own graves and then they threw them in the pit with lime. Then, yep. the, then, then the corporate titans laughed at them and kicked their own workers into the pit and threw lime over them. They could care less. Oh, it's sickening. It's sickening. The greed, the, the greed for the almighty dollar has never been worse than it is today. There's absolutely no ethos left in America. There's no ethos other than screw the other man and take the money and run. There's nothing left in this country. I wouldn't blame Obama for that, by the way. He didn't start this. Let's be very clear. This started a long time ago. In the middle. Dave, Dave, it's a very, very telling day, isn't it, that the progressives stopped Obama. It's a very telling day that even they had to 
protect their own behinds in their in their neighborhoods because they would not have gotten reelected if they went along with Obama on this because it was nakedly for the giant oligarchs. Well, I, I'll tell you, Cruz and Walker were two people that I liked. Oh, so I like. I never liked Cruz. I thought he was a, a snake, but I did like Walker, and I even said so. But if he actually said that, then I'm not going to support him for whatever that matters. He he did. He did. You can. Dave, thank you for calling, my friend. It's a sad day in America for all of us to learn what's been done to the worker. But the uh, by the way, send that yeah, D- Dave, a copy of Countdown to Mecca for Father's Day. You know, I try to explain to you where all these foreigners are coming from in America. Many of you think it's just from Mexico. Well, many are. Many are from China. In fact, there are more being brought in from Asia than from uh, from Mexico by Obama and more from the Middle East than you may imagine. But many of these workers amongst us, these immigrant workers, are actually being brought in by the oligarchs under the H-1B uh, and L-1 intra-company transfer uh, uh, visas that I mentioned to you. They didn't sneak into the country. They were, they were given a, a magic carpet into the country. And they were given these entries not because they like immigrants, not because Zuckerberg loves immigrants. As I hated when he marched with the immigrant groups about a year ago. Remember Zuckerberg, what an idiot he made of himself? Marching arm in arm like he was Martin Luther King Jr. with the, with the, the, the uh, Hispanic unions. He wasn't doing it because he liked Hispanics. That greedy Aztec wanted more gold. And that's why my statement today is probably the best I've ever made on this subject. These guys make the Aztecs look like benevolent tourists. And as you well know, the Aztecs were not benevolent tourists. Uh, In fact, the Aztecs were not the perpetrators of the genocide against themselves. No, it was the conquistadors who were those who decimated the Aztec culture, who exploited them and killed them and took as much gold out of the country that they could, out of the nations that they could, out of the earth. And remember I told you the story yesterday when uh, it was the end of the Aztec Empire after all the gold had been sucked out to Spain and to Portugal, mainly to Spain, by the way, when one of the dying Aztecs said, the Europeans have a disease, the gold disease, and there's not enough gold in the world to cure this disease. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Well, we have another winner of the Benedict Arnold Award today, and that would be Paul Ryan of Wisconsin. We're going to give him a double award. Not only does Paul Ryan get the Benedict Arnold Award, he gets the Quisling Award as well. Now let's listen in to the winner himself, Paul Ryan, on the TPP vote last night. Since TPA lapsed in 2007, the rest of the world kept going. While America stood still on trade... The rest of the world created a hundred trade agreements, negotiated and passed a hundred trade agreements to which the United States was a party to zero of them. What this means is other countries are going around the world getting better agreements between other countries. And as a result, the barriers against American products goes higher. Liar. He's got it exactly backwards. He's nothing but a paid you know what. I can't use what I'd really call him if it was in a bar room right now. That's what I think of him and Boehner and the rest of them. The fact of the matter is this could still be one of the greatest manufacturing nations on earth. It's really quite simple. You don't have to be a genius. Let's go back to what the founding fathers did in order to protect American manufacturing in this country. They established trade barriers. They put in tariffs on foreign goods because the equivalent of China in those days was Britain. Britain didn't like the emerging United States of America. After they lost the war, the uh, Revolutionary War, and America started to boom, what they wanted to do was prevent this nation from growing economically. And so they started to flood America with cheap goods to prevent us from developing our own machinery, machinery, even our own candle making. And what happened was the American leaders at that time cared about America. So they established uh, what I call uh, trade barriers known as tariffs against British goods. 
That is how a country takes care of its own. That is how a nation protects its industry and its bases. Not by signing trade agreements with other countries where they charge us tariffs so we don't charge them any. Ask any American who exports in this country. You ask anyone listening to this show, I want you to ask the next person you meet, ask them what happens when they try to export their product abroad. Ask them what happens. Ask about the red tape they face in the EU. Ask them about the tariffs that are imposed on their goods when the goods reach those sh- before the goods can be sent to those countries. And then reverse it. Find out what it takes for a foreign country to sell its goods in America. The reverse is true. That's why the country is dying. It's because we have sellout louts at every level of government and every level of uh, the oligarchy that runs the country. We know the names. We know who they are. It's supposed to be a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. It's not supposed to be a government of itself, by itself, and for itself, meaning just lobbyists for the oligarchs who have no loyalty to any nation. No loyalty to any nation. Oligarchs for whom only more green is all that matters. So to summarize, Obama got a real beating today. He put his reputation on the line. He went before Congress. He tried to lobby them. He got up early, probably for him, probably early in the day was 10 o'clock. I don't know when. And he actually went to Congress. Would you believe it? He actually went before them and he tried to lobby them. And the liberals, the progressives said, no, we can't do it. We can't do it because if we back you, Mr. Obama, we're going to get thrown out by our out-of-work base. The union said no because they would have lost union dues. They didn't want to lose union dues. How else could they survive? Unions live off the dues of the workers. So if you bleed 3 million workers, less dues. That's why Pelosi vote. So that's how it worked. Thank God. Trade agenda defeat. Hooray. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I will be voting today to slow down the fast track to get a better deal for the American people. Bigger paychecks, better infrastructure. We got the point. So the biggest bully in the world has been defeated by the Progressive Conservative Coalition. Hip, hip, hooray, hip, hip, hooray, hip, hip, hooray. Now, this may be a temporary victory for the American worker. It may be a temporary victory for American sovereignty. It may be a temporary victory because over the next 48 to 90 whatever hours, before they vote on this again on Tuesday, anything can happen. And I warn you that most of the Republicans, including your heroes, Ted Cruz, uh, the uh, ice cream man Rubio and now J- Walker apparently uh, are in favor of this trade authority for Obama and I oppose it for the reasons I've expressed to you and unlike those who are opposing it without having read it I certainly read the most important provision from my point of view which is the immigration provisions Daniel Costa and Ron Hira at EPI.org posted the uh, immigration provisions that were hidden deep inside the basement of the congressional offices that no one has been able to see. And it's far worse than you think. The liars, like Boehner, was saying, oh, it's all rumor. Oh, the Internet's full of gossip. It's worse than you think. And they spelled it out. The H, uh, the B-1B visas, the L-1 intracompany transfers are all spelled out in there. And we learned in plain English, the bottom line is that the TISA was written in secret by and for major corporations that would have benefited them greatly if it became law. What it really would have done was given them the authority to set policy, not only on immigration, but on many other deliberations uh, of their own. It would have taken it out of the hands of the people and their representatives in Congress. This was a leaked TISA text, and it made it clear that contrary to the claims by proponents of Fast Track Trade Promotion Authority, the reality is that those voting for Fast Track were ceding key powers to make immigration law and policy to an unelected group of corporations and foreign governments. So now we see what it's all about. And we can name the corporations because they've been named. 
They've been outed. Not that it matters to them. They're so above the law. What does it matter? Does it matter to Microsoft? Does it matter to General Electric? Does it matter to Facebook? Does it matter to any of these elites who, uh, who uh, push the fast track without public consent? Does it matter to the Silicon Valley uh, oligarchs who went behind the American people in a push to make it happen? AT&T, IBM, Microsoft, Hewlett Packard, eBay, Cisco, Intel, and Xerox. Does it matter to any of these people what you think? You are nothing but a uh, customer to them. To you, you're nothing but a customer. To them, rather, you're nothing but a customer. You're not an American. American is a misnomer to them. If they could, there's no flags left in the world. The world is one gigantic marketplace to AT&T, IBM, Microsoft, Hewlett Packard, eBay, Cisco, Intel, Xerox, and many others who backed Obama's trade initiative. That's my opinion. What's your opinion? KSFO, George, you have a different opinion? Go ahead. That's why you're on the Savage Nation. Yes, Mr. Savage, I was agreeing with you on so much, but you're shocking me with the way you argue against free trade. There are many things about it. There might be many things in the immigration in the bill. I don't know about that, but... Uh, wait, wait, wait. I spent two hours explaining what they are in the bill, so don't say you don't know anything about it. Now that might be it, but you still argue against free trade in a way that I just can't agree with. Well, the, George, first of all, there is no free trade. Just as there's no such thing as a free lunch, we don't have free trade. You know and I know that NAFTA isn't free trade. You and I both know that GATT was never free trade. That's why America's been hollowed out from the point of view of, the, of an industrial base. Everybody who studied this knows that. Milton Friedman, for example. There are many, you know, there, there are... It, when a country puts up tariffs against the U.S. or, or limits the trading, well, they're giving us their goods and, we're, and getting only our paper. You say there's big companies, there's also big business. That's why neither should be favored by government. They're self-interest seekers. That was I, don't think you, I don't think you understand what we've been talking about. This has nothing to do with free trade. It has to do with benefiting a handful of oligarchs who run the largest companies in America, George what the government that's what the founding fathers were against was a, was a handle for these people to get their grips on power it was big government that they were most afraid of not big business and labor there's there's all kinds of different but what is the difference between the oligarchs of business and the oligarchs of government tell me the differential the difference is that the, the oligarchs of of government have absolute power and business does not have absolute power. But business was trying to give Obama absolute power. That was the whole point of defeating this bill. The idea of the founding fathers was to keep the... Let, let's put the founding fathers out of it for a minute. The, the oligarchs were trying to give Obama absolute power over so many aspects of our lives. You know that. I, I, st I was a libertarian when I started. I became a Republican. When I thought they were running an anarchist. And Ronald Reagan came on the scene, and now there's no such thing as a Republican anymore again, in the true sense of the word. I'm back to being a libertarian. I agree with you on but, that. But you're, you're telling me that you actually want higher wages, lower wages. That's what you're saying, isn't it? It's real wages. If you allow... Well, no. How low do you want the wages to go? Tell me. A dollar an hour? Would that satisfy the corporate oligarchs? The level that they're supposed to be at. Well, what should they be at? Tell me what they should be at. The, the level of what they earn in China? Wait, the point is you can't tell No, no the, the point is how low do you want the wages to go to follow the absurdity of your argument? Well, You're giving a reducto ad, absurd, ad, ad absurdum argument. You're saying that let the wages find their own level. Well, how can you let that happen when you're competing with China where there are slave laborers there? That is not slave labor. But anyway, how long could that... What is the hourly wage in, in a Chinese factory? Say that again? Well, I didn't hear that. What is the hourly wage rate in a Chinese, in a China factory. You don't know what the, the, the level should be. I don't know what the level should be. Well, you just said let the level find itself. So I said to you, what is the hourly wage in China for a factory worker? You can't place the level anywhere. Well, but wait, you you're not answering the question. You're, you're alleging that you should let wages fall to whatever level they should fall to, f to have free trade. I'm asking you, what's the hourly rate in China? It's a simple question. I, we couldn't tell you what the hourly wait rate in China. But you don't. But wait, just follow the logic. Whatever that rate is, it's admittedly at least ten or twenty times lower than it is in America. Can we can we estimate that that's true? Can we say then that the, the, the rate? No, no, don't jump to me. Let's take it a step at a time. We agree that it's ten to twenty times lower than in America, right? Can 
we? How about if we go up a little higher? Look, I, look, I'm not one of your students, and you're starting to uh, to bore me because you've lost the argument. You're smart enough to play chess, and know, and you know you've already lost. You know and I know what I'm saying. You're smart enough to see where I'm going. And you see that you lost your argument. We don't have free trade. China adjusts its currencies and manipulates its currencies. That's another reason not to have given Obama trade authority. China is not playing the game fairly. Now, I know China is not part of this deal right now. But the other Asian nations are, and China would eventually join it. We all know that as well. So let's say their rate uh, in China is, I don't know, a dollar an hour. And the, the rate of a worker here in America is 20 or 15 or $10 an hour. How in the world can an American worker work and, and live on a dollar an hour? So, so we, have to, we have to bump this up one level of discussion. No, no, we don't have to bump it anywhere. You are alleging that we should let wages fall to the level at which they will be competitive with the nations in the trade deal. I'm asking you, how could anyone live on less than they're making in America now with minimum wage being what it is? Who could live on less? The point is that... The point is you don't know what you're talking about. That's the end of the story. I've given you too much time of a national show. The point is many of you talk out of both sides of your mouth. You try to live on the minimum wage. You try to live on what an American minimum wage worker makes and, and then get back to me and then tell me you should cut their wages to that of China. This is so stupid. And I heard I've heard this over and over again from from stupid free marketeers in this country about don't raise that minimum wage. It'll, it'll kill jobs. It'll kill businesses. I've heard that from guys who own restaurants. All they wanted was another Porsche. That's all they really wanted. They wanted to pay the dishwasher a dollar an hour less so they could buy another Porsche, that's all, or buy another boat. Come on, give me a break. No one can live on those wages. I mean, we're living in one country here. Things are very expensive. Have you looked at the price of hamburger? Have you gone and priced a pound of chopped meat recently or a, a chicken? Have you seen what's happened to the cost of, of, uh, of protein in this country? Who can live on this? This not only would have been a job killer, it would have been a people killer. You would have had massive unemployment if this had passed. Make no mistake about it, it exposed not only the Republicans for the phonies they are, it exposed Barack Obama for the phony he really has always been. And I hope you progressives will finally come to say, you know what, Savage, you've been warning us and warning us and warning us. I knew you were right. That's why I listened to you. Obama is a stooge of the oligarchs. I shall return. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The risk. The problem with many people in radio is that they, they're not in business. They're not businessmen. They're only talkers or commentators. They don't live in the real world. They've never worked in a factory. They've never been an hourly worker. They don't walk in the streets and look at the real people. So they give the standard line about free markets or, you know, let the market find itself, let the wages don't set a minimum wage. Live in the real world and find out what it's like to live on minimum wage in the United States of America, number one. But let's go back to this, this, uh, trade deal that Obama just lost on, at least temporarily, let's hope permanently, because Nancy Pelosi defeated him uh, behind his back because the unions didn't want this to go through because they don't want to lose millions of workers again, as they did under Bill Clinton with uh, uh, NAFTA and, uh, and such. They know what would happen. They, they know that they would lose union workers if this were passed. And they know this was only about Microsoft and all the other big techno oligarchs. They wanted more B1B business visitor visas. They wanted more L1 intracompany transferees, which would have taken immigration policy out of the hands of Congress entirely. I did my homework. This was hidden inside the bill. It was given to me by Daniel Costa and Ron Hira. I'm going to post it on michaelsavage.com so you could look at the TISA draft annex and take a look at it and, and see exactly what it's about. The draft annex on immigration also has a clause called movement of natural persons would have restricted the ability of the current and future American administrations to continue some of the basic immigration procedures it currently follows, such as requiring in-person interviews with L1 applicants, which is why Zuckerberg wanted 
this passed. They didn't want that meddlesome Congress standing between uh, Mr. Undershirt and his profits. No, they wanted to be able to bring him in as many as they wanted, as fast as they wanted. It gets even worse. The draft treaty that was disclosed today would have even prohibited common sense legislative proposals that Congress considered over the past few years, including, are you ready for this? Minimum wage rules for companies seeking to hire guest workers in the L-1 visa program. Why would they not want minimum wage rules? Because Zuckerberg wants lower wages. If he could fire a worker who is 50 years old and throw him out on his behind after he devoted himself to let that little brat from Harvard make his billions and throw him out on his behind after he trains an Indian worker who will work for half the money, why should he want Congress to step between him and more profit, huh? Any other questions? It's all greed. The L-1 visa program, by the way, has been a primary vehicle to facilitate the offshoring of high-wage jobs and to replace American workers with cheaper guest workers. This TISA was written in secret by and for major corporations, period, end of story. It exposes Obama for what he is. How any progressive, of which I am not, could ever have been taken in by this guy, I don't understand. You know, I don't mind if you're a progressive. If you're, if you're a mentally disordered person and you actually think that being a progressive makes you a better and a smarter person, that's your prerogative. We live in a free country. But how could you have ever been duped by Barack Obama? How is it that I saw through this man from the minute he walked on the world stage? I've written two books about this guy. The man agitates me because he is a phony through and through. And how any progressive could ever support him after this, I don't know. I have no idea how you could. Because even Nancy Pelosi had had enough of his double talk. Nevertheless, he's a big loser. Rubio is a big loser. Cruz is a giant loser. And if Walker really supported this, he's finished. He's toast. I'm starting to think that only, you're not going to believe what I'm going to say, Sarah Palin could save America. I would love to see Sarah Palin go up against Hillary Clinton. You may say she wouldn't stand a chance. As far as I know, Sarah Palin's husband didn't make hundreds of millions of dollars while Sarah Palin was governor. As far as I know, Sarah Palin's children didn't benefit to the tune of tens of millions of dollars while their mother was governor. And that's all I would stick to, is Hillary Clinton's corruption. That would be it. That's the whole story. 855 400 Paulina on WABC. Go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? I have three quick points. First, I'd like to thank you for the education and the information I get from your program. Well, I really did the homework on the immigration provisions hidden inside that bill. No one's done that yet. I did. Secondly, uh, Scott Walker, I was a supporter of him. No longer. Bingo. Finished. Gone. Over. Oh, exactly. And the last thing, I wanted to get your opinion. Now that Pelosi went against Obama, what do you think the repercussions may be against her? Well, I think that Pelosi will be denied a, uh, a Michelle Obama lunch. I think that Pelosi will not be able to feast on the very famous uh, uh, Michelle Obama school lunches anymore. I don't think she'll be invited to a school with her to enjoy that jelly bean. I have no idea what repercussions might it might. Maybe she won't be invited to a, a rap concert at the White House. I don't know. What, what do you think? What, what repercussions? What's he going to do to her? Well... Usually Obama gets bent out of shape if people go against him. That's right. He is absolutely vindictive. So what do you think? You're asking a question because you have something in mind. What do you think he's going to do? I really have no idea, but I think he may do something. I think the reverse is true. I think that since the AFL-CIO and Nancy Pelosi are very closely aligned, and her vote was strictly to make certain that union workers were protected for the ACL, uh, AFL-CIO. I think that Obama's going to be punished by the AFL-CIO, not reverse. I think they have far more influence than he does. They've been around a lot longer than this interloper. And they'll be around a lot longer after this interloper has left the office after he's through plaguing America. So I think that the AFL-CIO may think very carefully about what they're going to do to get even with Obama for trying to shaft their workers. I think that would be the question. Free copy of Countdown to Mecca to that fine lady. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. This is the Savage Nation. It's actually a good, uh, good day for America because the biggest bully in the world, Barack Obama, has been defeated by a progressive conservative coalition. 
say, well, wait a minute. Now, what is this really about? Can you give me the trade bill for dummies? You say trade, I go to sleep. Well, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. You, you heard about B1 business visitor visa programs. You've heard about those. That gives the pockmarked undershirt wearing Zucker face the ability to bring in cheap workers from India primarily. He has a lot of people from India in uh, his company who work in immigration, making sure that the government mows down American workers so he can pocket more money for his little piggy bank. That's a B-1B uh, visa. Now, it was never meant to be that. The B-1B visa was created to bring in foreign workers when there were no American workers who could do that work. That's all it was passed for. At least that's what the people were told. And like the good people we are, we believe the liars, the poisonous liars, the traitors who should be thrown into prison for what they've done to this country. They didn't want it for that. They didn't want it to bring in workers that they couldn't get here. They did it only to increase the bottom line. So that's just the beginning. So they would have given the companies the ability to bring in under-regulated B-1B visas. And also there's an L-1 intra-company transferee program you don't know about. The L-1 intra-company transferee program it's a visa program, would be used by these greedy Aztecs to permit temporary employees from abroad to work in the United States with no economic needs tests, period. Congress could not impose a needs test. So if Zuckerberg, the greedy Aztec, wanted to say, you know what, I'm just going to bring in temporary employees from abroad to work for me. They'll work for, let's say, 25 an hour. I'll fire all of the old guys who are making 70 an hour and throw them in the gutter so I can buy a bigger yacht. That would have been fine. Now, remember, these visa programs are already underregulated. They're already abused by big corporations because neither the L-1 nor the B-1 visa program is numerically limited by law. This means that potentially hundreds of thousands of workers could enter the United States every year to work in these 38 sectors. Now, that's just the beginning. Do you remember what GATT did to us, G-A-T-S? Do you remember that when I was on the radio in the 90s, I tried to warn you about NAFTA and GATT? It has not worked for America. NAFTA and GATT has gutted American manufacturing and American workers. Did you, did you understand that? Congress now wants to raise visa fees, as they did in 2010, in order to slow down the flow of H-1B uh, workers. Guess who opposes it? The Indian government. Our good friends in India oppose this. They're crying foul, and they threaten to formally complain to the World Trade Organization because we want them to pay more money for these guest worker visas. They won't be happy till they also overrun America. Don't assume that they're nice guys and they're just here for us. Did you know that Microsoft, I looked into this very carefully, has an entire partnership with immigration attorneys, almost all of whom are of Indian descent? Look into it carefully. I support Indian people. I have from the beginning. But I don't support any race, any religion that hates America and undermines us. It's that simple. So there's a lot more to the trade bill and immigration than meets the eye. I'm not an anti-corporatist, by the way. Let's be very clear. But I read this trade bill, and what's interesting to me is that the progressives and conservatives formed a coalition to defeat it. Boehner, frankly, should be tarred and feathered and driven out of the city. I mean symbolically, of course. Boehner should be given a, uh, uh, let's say, an award, the Benedict Arnold Award. Michael Savage grants... John Boehner, the Benedict Arnold Award of the Year. I've never seen anything like this guy. This guy would uh, vote against the American people for a $500 turkey. If Microsoft offered Boehner a $500 turkey dinner in a restaurant for him and his family, he'd vote against any American provision possible, in my estimation. But let's get down to brass tacks here. Now, many of you have heard rumors that this trade deal had provisions that would turn our immigration programs over to a few corporations such as who? Zuckerberg, Mr. Undershirt, needs more billions. Not enough for that greedy, pimply piece of garbage. No, it means more money for Google. Not enough for those two pigs. They wanted more, the two pigs. Not enough money for the pigs. No, every one of them is a pig. They have the gold disease. And so you say, well, wait a minute. So why did the progressives turn against these corporations who are their friend with all other progressive issues. I'll give it to you in the simplest way I possibly can. Why would Nancy Pelosi, the most, quote, progressive politician in American history, meaning communist, socialist, you name it, why did she vote against this? Because big unions are, are opposing it. So you say, well, wait a minute, why would Trumpka and the unions oppose this deal? Aren't they in favor of everything Obama does that's progressive? 
you got to understand, at the end of the day, the unions are in business. They're in business. How do you think they siphon money to the top? From the poor little guys and dolls that work for them and then kick money up to the top. So if they melt jobs to China or Japan or Canada or Mexico, their union membership declines and the money doesn't flow to the top. Do you understand how that works? It has nothing to do with America. It has nothing to do with the American worker. It has to do with the American union worker kicking money up to the top. So they say, of course we can't do this to our own members, not because we give a, a, a rat's behind about any of these people. They're nothing but cannon fodder to us. But if we melt three million more jobs like NAFTA did, we're going to lose union members. We're going to lose some of the uh, money that's flowing to the top. We can't have it. It's as simple as that. It's realpolitik. I understand it. You know, they say once a scholar, always a scholar. Now, I began as a scholar in the university days. And so I spent time today reading the immigration provisions of this deal. You won't believe what's in this. I'm going to tell you that it has more to do with the immigration than you could ever imagine. Boehner is a Benedict Arnold. McConnell of Benedict Arnold, Ryan of Benedict Arnold. They, they should all be given the Benedict Arnold Award of the day. I'd say Quisling, but nobody knows who Quisling is. But they know who Benedict Arnold is. That's who they are. But they lost today. Here's another example of bullying. You're not going to believe this story. Legendary rabbi of England calls for Jewish surrender in Europe. England's former chief rabbi, Lord Jonathan Sachs, gave a speech described by the media in Herzliya, Israel. And he believed that the boycott and divest movement against Israel had succeeded in making the state of Israel a divisive factor in Jewish life. And the rabbi claimed, as a result, to support Israel was almost impossible for European Jews. He gave up, in other words. He gave in to the Muslim fanatics. And now the Jews in Europe are saying we can no longer support Israel. Now, if this was just a little weakling rabbi in Queens, New York, it would have no meaning. This is an astonishing speech because it came from the former chief rabbi of England who has said he can no longer support the Jewish state because he has been intimidated by the Muslim fanatics who have penetrated and poisoned England and turned it into a satellite of Pakistan. We have a bully in New York City named Mayor de Blasio who has intimidated the police. Crime is skyrocketing in New York City. City, take it, check it out. He's putting a thousand new cops on the street and he won't admit it's because of his policies that crime is spiraling. Now you've got psychos like Janet Napolitano saying it's microaggressive to talk about meritocracy at the University of California. Let me remind you of something. Competition is the basis of humanity. I have been in primitive villages. I didn't understand how people functioned in little villages until I went there back in the 1960s as a young, let us call, anthropologist. And I thought it would be some kind of communist system where everyone got along and shared. Well, guess what? Down at the most simple tribal level, it was extremely competitive. The best hunter became the leader. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? The best hunter became the leader, not the worst hunter, not the crippled hunter, not the perverted hunter but the best hunter, because otherwise they would starve to death in the village. Well, nothing's ever changed in our society, ever. Everybody can understand that, except the left-wing fanatics who want something for nothing. Have I not shown you that all of this bullying is about people who cannot compete on a level playing field, so they're using their sexual orientation, their race, or their disability as a weapon against people who are uh, either by dint of birth or by brains or by hard work superior to them in the world of competition? Write that down because I mean every word I just said. I've spent my entire life trying to succeed in places where I was told I could not succeed. I've been told I would fail where I never failed. I was told I could not win where I won. I was told not to apply for a Ph.D. program, and I applied for it, and I earned my doctorate. I was told I wouldn't last one day in radio because my voice was too New York. I'm in radio for 21 years. Right now, my show is number one on WABC. Right now, my show is number one on many other stations. Who was wrong, them or me? How did I succeed? By never giving up, damn it, and I never will give up. As long as I breathe, I will fight for what I believe is right. And what I'm trying to do by example is tell you to stop it. Stop taking it from these twisted freaks. Stand up to them. They're not stronger than you. They're weaker than you. And don't let them use their situation to bully you. These bullies have to be shouted down.
I don't care if it's a college administrator. I don't care who it is. Scream in the bully's face. Give it back to them. I don't care if it's Muslims bullying you, telling you that you're a racist. I don't care if it's gays and lesbians bullying you. I don't care if it's street thugs bullying the cops. I don't care if it's lawyers in the ACLU. I don't care if it's illegal aliens screaming that they want rights they're not entitled to. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very, very, very long in this process. I've seen what this has done. I've seen how it's destroyed uh, societies before. In the old days, it came under the guise of fairness. Now it's coming at us from a different point of view. Now it's called white privilege. Now it's called microaggression. But make no mistake about it. You are being bullied out of your life. Your very freedom is at stake. And you have to remember this. The TSA has been written in secret by and for major corporations that would benefit them only if it became law. It was written for Microsoft. It was written for Facebook. It was written for Google. It was written for the tech companies who lobbied around the clock with the bully in chief. They want more profit, that's all. And they got shafted today because of a progressive conservative coalition. Incidentally, where does Ms. Clinton stand on this? Nowhere, as usual, a liar and a hider. It was her husband, after all, who gave us NAFTA. Do you remember NAFTA? And raise your hands if you remember what Bill Clinton did to America, that greedy Aztec, stealing hundreds of millions of dollars under the guise of speaker fees and this and contributions. And where is she on this? Nowhere to be found. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from. Swiss Who do you love? And so while I'm a big supporter of TAA, if TAA slows down the fast track, I am prepared to vote against TAA because then its defeat, sad to say, is the only way that we will be able to slow down the fast track. I will be voting today to slow down the fast track. Nancy, we don't need the whole thing. You got the picture. The bully lobbied her. The bully lobbied everyone else. He uh, got off the golf game. He changed his morning routine. I don't know what he does in the morning, but he's never seen in the morning or rarely seen in the morning. Today he went to Capitol Hill, the bully, and tried to bulldoze everyone into voting uh, for this sellout, this corporate crony capitalism, this sellout of American workers. And even Pelosi didn't go for it for one reason. It's not that she loves the American worker. I mean, let's be clear. She's a, a wackadoodle progressive. We know what she stands for. But she's closely tied into the American Union movement, which she's entitled to be. And so when Mr. Trumpka of the AFL-CIO came out against it, she obviously came out against it. Now, why would he come out against it? What, does he love the worker so much all of a sudden? I don't think so. What is a union? How do the union uh, bigwigs make their money? From dues. So if you lose another few million workers to foreign workers who will not be union members, you lose dues. So they can't have that. It was bad for their business. And so that's why she went for it, in my opinion. And as far as the progressives, I mean, I can go to one district in New York, like I think it's Buffalo where Louise Slaughter is from, another so-called progressive. She was against it because her city is hollowed out. It was destroyed by Bill Clinton with uh, NAFTA and, and GATT. Mr. and Mrs. Clinton did so much for the American worker, didn't they? What's really disgusting is there's a guy on CNN whose last name rhymes with the man who invented the flush toilet uh, in England is not covering any of this because it's bad news for Obama and he's a stooge of Obama. They're not even covering this. They're covering the, the prison escape. Most people don't care about the prison escape. They care about jobs. They care about America's sovereignty. Anyway, none of this would have happened under a true conservative administration. The Constitution would be honored, not stepped on. Race riots would not be smoldering in our cities. Obamacare would never have been passed. Crony corporate capitalism such as this would have been exposed had we had a true conservative in the White House. The useless alphabet agencies like EPA and FCC would have been thrown out of business, put out of business. The Federal Reserve would be audited to see where the money is going and what they're stealing. Corrupt banksters and politicians would be running out of the country on the first jet to Switzerland because they'd be going to jail. Our borders would be secured with the military. Small businesses would be growing in this country if legislation Easing regulations and red tape would have been eliminated. Unemployment levels would be at extraordinarily low levels 
as the American economy would roar back to life. Auto companies that couldn't survive wouldn't have been bailed out. And most importantly, we would be running the Keystone XL pipeline, not making sure that Obama's donors block it so they can run the oil in from Canada on their railroad cars, Mr. Buffett. Don't think we're all so stupid. The fact of the matter is, this country is melting down faster than Chernobyl. And these corporate oligarchs are the greediest men in the history of the world. They're worth billions of dollars, and it's still not enough for them. They want lower and lower wages. They want to flood America with workers from the Pacific Rim right now in order to make certain that they can kick out more mature American workers and throw them in the gutter so they can buy another yacht of 400 foot in length and then give away more money making believe they're so benevolent, Mr. Bill Gates. We're not impressed with you, Bill Gates. We don't buy your sweater act. We see through you. And you, Zuckerberg, you're a special case. You've been acting like you're for immigration, marching with your Hispanic buddies over the months. We saw right through you, Zuckerberg. You're a greedy, pimply-faced Harvard sheet, as far as we're concerned. You're the lowest of the low. We, the American people, are boiling over with anger and rage at these phonies. Anyway, you get the picture. It's not over till it's over. But the fact of the matter is, the Silicon Valley Cretans lobbied as near as Thursday, demanding that Obama's trade deal go through. 27 executives sent a letter to House members, AT&T, IBM, Microsoft, Hewlett Packard, eBay, Cisco, Intel, and Xerox, added their voices to this debate over Obama's sellout on trade. Well, right now it seems to be on life support because the progressives joined with the true conservatives in a coalition to defeat America's uh, bully, America's number one bully, Barack Obama. Savage.